Time for our next installment of Bloomberg's Billionaires Club. This time, we're talking to Lebanon's new prime minister, Naguib Mekati. He's built his fortune by buying telephone networks as civil war raged. Well, now he's going to have to tap his experience in connecting people to avoid further political conflict. Let's cross over to Lara Satrakian. She's in Dubai for our latest look at the hidden world of the mega rich. Lara. Lindsay Mikati is a man in the middle of Lebanon's fractious politics of a region that's sprouting unrest on practically every border. But what we learn, Lindsay, in charting his life in politics and business is that he's used to wrestling with turmoil and that he's also built an empire from the ashes. He's one of the richest men in the Middle East, Najib Mikati, a telecom tycoon worth an estimated $2.5 billion, who's taken on his toughest, most controversial challenge. I said, I have to run and try to save the country if I can. In January 2011, Lebanon's Prime Minister Saad Hariri was forced from office when the militant Shiite group Hezbollah withdrew from his coalition government. Mikati, who'd been prime minister in 2005, stepped in again to fill the void. I believe the magic word is stability. In Lebanon, whenever you create stability, you all, all doors will open. Najib and his brother Taha built a telecommunications empire in the turmoil of Lebanon's civil war, which raged from 1975 to 1990. They built infrastructure for a country in desperate need, then replicated their business model throughout Africa in conflict zones like Liberia, Sudan, Ghana, and the Congo. In 2005, his company Investcom listed on both the London and Dubai stock exchanges, a rare move for the region's family firms. We were the first from among the Arab or Middle Eastern companies we went into, into public. Uh, into IPO and we are very transparent and a very successful IPO in year 2005. In 2006, South Africa's MTN bought his company for 5.5 billion dollars. The Mikati stake was an estimated 3.5 billion dollars. They moved their shares into M1, a private investment vehicle. Over 50 percent of our portfolio is still in telecom and, and telecom is very important for us. So uh, the main issue for us is to develop our telecom portfolio and to, to develop this business. Among their other holdings, real estate worth an estimated $1 billion across New York, London and the Middle East. And a stake in Royal Jordanian. In 2007, they bought French fashion line Fasonab from Nordstrom for an estimated $210 million. Mikati claims he maintains a Chinese wall between his business and his political life. He's handed off management of the company to his nephew, Azmi. But he still has an eye for opportunity. Definitely this, this kind of social networking, communicating, is becoming very easy. And I believe we have to see here how we can make money out of this. For now, Mikati's focused on Lebanon's fortunes. He says he brings a businessman's perspective to government. I'm a very uh, logical and practical man. I know that I don't have the miracle to, for once and for all to solve all problems in Lebanon, but at least in this stage, in this hot uh, time in the region, I can protect Lebanon and to create a productive cabinet. Lindsay Makati's big bet is that if he can pull up Lebanon's prosperity, it will stabilize the politics, potentially heal some of the wounds of the past. But that gets much more difficult as the net instability in the Middle East continues to climb. Lindsay? That instability uh, being felt in Syria at the moment, the U.S. and its allies calling on the president to step down while the imposing sanctions on Assad's regime. So what, what kind of impact is that going to have on Lebanon and its neighbors? Were you able to speak to him about that at all? We did. A tremendous impact. It shifts the power politics in Lebanon to unknown effect. The camps in Lebanon are split along the lines of pro and anti-Syrian, the most powerful physical force in the hands of Hezbollah, a group that's expected to weaken as Syria's instability continues. But also unknown factors, how this is going to affect Israel, the Golan Heights, Turkey, a vacuum along its southern border, and of course Iran, a major Syrian ally that's going to be losing potentially strategic depth as Syria continues to descend into that violence, into that unrest. Lindsay?